Hey YouTube, Copperstand here. Before we start, I want to say that I really appreciate all the support, advice and nice words in the previous video. You're all breathtaking. Today we are leveling the Explorer Pirate class Buccaneer to level 200. In my opinion, Buccaneers really start to shine after 5th job, so make sure to stick around till the end to see more of that. We start off in Maple Island, and oh man. This takes me back to where, oh wait, this isn't that kind of video. We complete the tutorial and reach first job. We're staying in Victoria Island this time. Did you know you can gain some quick levels by defeating Mushmom near Hennessy's? You can just keep changing channels to find her as she spawns pretty frequently now. And if you're done with Mushmom, you can move over to Blue Mushmom. In first job, we get a double jump, a dash, two passive skills, one that increases critical rate and critical damage, and one that increases speed and jump. We also get our somersault kick and double shot skills. We could just normally kick monsters, but pirates are a bit extra like that, they have to do a flip every time they kick. You can max all first job skills though, so if you want to shoot monsters instead of kicking them, that's just fine. Just keep in mind to apply the correct stat points. Strength for buccaneers and dex for gunslingers. We keep grinding in Victoria Island until we reach level 30 and complete the second job advancement. Finally, we can start smashing those monsters. We're off to our first team dungeon, LNL Fairy Academy. In second job, we get our powered up form. We can charge energy by attacking monsters with our skills. You can also shout really loud to charge energy, but that's optional. <laughs> We unlock some basic second job skills like Mastery and Booster, but our HP boost skill also passively gives us 100% knockback resistance, which is actually pretty amazing. The passive skill Perseverance also recovers 5% of your HP and MP every 5 seconds, which really helps you cut down on your potion use. By the way, don't forget to do those tutorial quests for free items, pets, hair and face coupons, all that jazz. After becoming the god of the fairy high school, we go on an expedition to Rihanna Strait and complete that team dungeon. Brawler's Energy Vortex is a pretty nice skill with a ton of range that really helps mobbing monsters halfway across the map. We train at the Boar's Imperium next until we reach level 60 and can do our third job advancement. While traveling through various maps for training, let's go over the skills for a second. We now have three more ways to kill monsters until they die. We get a rush-like skill called Spiral Assault, which can be linked with your second job skill, Corkscrew Blow. We have Hedgehog Buster, which is a rather short-ranged, and finally Static Thumper, which does a ton of damage, but also has quite a short range. You know, you really can't beat the shit out of monsters without getting closer to them. We also get more buffs to our critical rate. This class actually gets a ton of critical rate and critical damage buffs, it's like pretty insane later on. And the passive skill Admiral Wings, which decreases our damage taken by 20%. By the way, if you are enjoying this Maple Story Training to 200 series, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Make sure to ring that bell notification to stay up to date when new videos go live. For our next Training to 200 video, we'll be training a Knight of Sickness, but which one should we train? We already did Nightwalker and Thunderbreaker, so all that's left is Wind Archer, Blaze Wizard or Flame Wizard, whatever they're called, and Dawn Warrior. So make sure to let me know in the comments. Also in third job, you get another buff to your charging skill. You can now be supercharged, which takes your attack, movement speed and defenses to a whole new level. But we cannot maintain this form forever, so you have to keep attacking, you have to keep recharging. By the way, if just training bores you and you want to do something different, try the Afterlands Team Dungeon. It's a really good source of EXP and rewards as well. After supercharging our way through the early game, we reach level 100 in the 4th job advancement. We're well on our way to become the King of Pirates at this rate. We get some Star Force and go do a quick Zakum run as well for some additional levels. Oh, and if you're playing during the Awake update and you have all these Awake events going on, in the Awake coin shop that you can access by talking to this glowing panda, there are some sweet deals on Mastery Books, so you don't need to do team dungeons or like spend a lot of messages on those. You can just go here and get your Mastery Books. They're pretty cheap. After two monster park runs, we go a bit deeper into the clock tower in Lidibrium and train at more Star Force monsters over there. At this point, we're firing energy blasts from our fists like it's nothing. This skill is called Double Blast, which is your main attacking skill. Basically, you're firing like Kamehameha waves. And if your energy is fully charged, that's a freaking big attack as well. We also have Octopunch, which is more of a bossing skill, and Dragon Strike, which can only be used when your energy is fully charged. This skill just does damage, but it also leaves a debuff on monsters that increases your final damage against that monster, so make sure to use it at the start of a fight. We can now go Ultra Instinct with another buff to our charge skill called Ultra Charge, granting us even more bonuses when our energy is fully charged. Buccaneers are so strong that they can even bend time with a skill Time Leap, which resets all skill cooldowns, even for party members. And their skill speed and fusion boosts not only their own attack speed, but also for the entire party as well, which is pretty nice to have. And in 4th job, instead of a passive mastery skill, their mastery skill is linked to a buff called Crossbones, which not only increases your mastery passively, but also boosts your damage by 30% when active. 
Their full screen attack Nautilus Strike also grants an additional boost after using it, increasing the amount of lines by 2 for some attacks. Honestly, the buffs just keep on coming and coming. Their Typhoon Crush skill passively gives you a 40% chance to ignore all enemy defense, and their Pirate's Revenge skill has a 25% chance to decrease damage taken by 40% and increase attack by 25% for 30 seconds, and there's a chance it activates every second. So yeah, as Buccaneers you get like, what, 60% damage reduction? If you pair that, wait a second. If you pair that 40% damage reduction with the 20% damage reduction from the earlier skills and the 15% damage reduction from a level 6 Pirate Blessing Link skill, that means she'll have uh, that means she'll have 75% damage reduction. As a Buccaneer, you barely take any damage. All right, it's time for a breeder. Buccaneers get some insane buffs in Forge Up for sure, and and they're even useful for party play as well with some nice party buffs. After completing all the wanted signs of Green Folk Town, we get some additional boss items in Star Force a bit more, so that we can train in the Cave of Trails in El Nut, which again is another Star Force area. You will need 100 Star Force at one point anyway, so upgrade all the stuff like those boss accessories that we bought earlier, because we won't be replacing those anyway. Most of the other gear we will replace for the pencil set around level 140, but it doesn't hurt to for example upgrade a lower level weapon just so you can do a bit more damage against those really powerful Star Force monsters. I was pretty busy in real life the next couple of days, so I didn't really have a lot of time to play Maple. And when this happens, I usually just do Horntail runs and Monster Park runs whenever I can. And we did that all the way until we reached level 150. Then it was time to prepare for the last bit of grinding until we reach level 200. We stuck up on our potions and get 100 Star Force on our pencil like here. We're really flying through the levels with our newfound power and train at the current tower in Kritios before moving over to the hideout where we stick around until we can use our remaining Legion potions to level up to level 180. At level 180 of course you go to Futuperion where we train at the Swollen Stumps and then we go to Forsaken Excavation Site 1. We got ourselves a totem from the daily login so the spawn rate is actually pretty nice here. Actually Forsaken Excavation Site 1 has had its spawn rate increase with the latest update. And this map is always level 10 burning, so actually sometimes it's even better than Forsaken Excavation Site 2. Also to quickly mention the Hyper Skills, the Buccaneer Hyper Skill Power Unity is insane. You can use it every 10 seconds. When your energy is fully charged and you're in your Super Saiyan mode, it does some damage, which is nice and all. But the real kicker is that it increases your critical damage by 10% when you use it. And that effect stacks up to 4 times, so that's 40% critical damage. That's an insane increase that many classes only dream of. The only downside is that you have to maintain it and it costs energy to use that skill, but overall it's an insane damage buff. At level 191 we went to the Fox Valley team dungeon, the spawn rates over here have been increased as well and you can really notice it, like there are a lot of monsters here now. It might actually be viable to the train you now. We complete this team dungeon and reach 196, then I went to Forsaken Excavation Site 3 and I did something insane, something unheard of, it's so crazy, I think I almost got locked up. I was training in a party. So my totem ran out and Femke needed to level up her Kana, so we teamed up and to level up together. Thanks to Kishin, training together was actually pretty nice, but holy moly, Kana's skills are literally all over the place. I was chilling at the bottom of the map and then I went up and it was like explosions and stuff flying around. And I got spooked more than once when a giant foot appeared on my screen, like seriously. Parting with Akana is like getting instant heart attacks. Once we reach level 199 and 65%, we go to Scrapyard for some easy EXP from the introduction quest there and reach level 200. Finally, we are the king of pirates and reach 5th job. 5th job for this class is so good though. With Meltdown, you turn into an actual Super Saiyan. You can teleport around the map by using the arrow keys, just like with Kaiser when he's in his final form. And you can fire off Spirit Bombs when using the skill again. And you can fire up to three of those. How cool is that? There is Serpent Vortex, which charges one stack every 10 seconds. You can hold up to six of those. And when you use the skill, you basically get a bit of a dash that you can use to quickly go around the map while doing a ton of damage at the same time. It really is a big boost to your mobility. Another fifth job skill is Howling Fist, which is pretty nice, but besides doing damage, doesn't really add that much. <laughs> Apparently there was an elite monster here though that we, uh, that we kind of one-shot. But the real kicker, the real MVP, the real GOAT is Lord of the Deep. This skill can only be used when your energy is fully charged, but with your new skill Meltdown, it actually charges your instant fully, and there's one of your hyper skills that also does the same thing. So this skill has a ton of uptime. It works a bit like Paladin, which is the best class by the way. Their hammer skill, you know where the hammers float around you, it's sort of like that, but it has a bigger range. If you put enough funding in this class, you can simply walk and jump around and watch the whole world burn. It's pretty nice. 
But Buccaneers do require some skill and attention when grinding because you'll need to maintain your energy as much as possible. Your spirit bombs do give you an iframe though, which is pretty useful when bossing. And you can use Spiral Assault and your other mobility skills to really zoom around the map and stay up close and personal with those monsters and bosses. Up until 4th job, I personally wasn't having too much fun. It got better after 4th job, but their 5th job is absolutely amazing. But yeah, that was all for today. As always, many thanks to our members for making this video possible. Thanks to Quinn, Niels de Comic, Rama Waar, Shen125, Sebastian Hanoi, FLX, Jeff Wang, Pinky Traveler, Terry Kim, Jiju, Galaxy Art, Je Suis Rodriguez, Zakiri, Matthias Simonsen, Varese, Ryaiser. Ryaiser Ariu? <laughs> Ryaiser are you? I'm feeling, I have this general feeling that you guys are just making up names now just to make it hard for me. Dries Zumker, Plex, Zenny, welcome back Zenny, Narukumu and Wiley. If you would like to mention you as well and get early access to new videos, check out the join button below these videos. I've seen a ton of new members since Sunday's video, so again, thank you all so much for that. And of course, thank you all for watching. Stay safe and happy mapling. Ryaiser are you? Are you? Are you? Are you? Riser, are you? Riser, Riser, are you? Riser, are you? Riser, are you? Riser, are are you? Riser, are you?